Are you ready to talk some Apple? I are. Good, because otherwise I'd make you walk the plank on this episode of the Infinite Loop Show. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Infinite Loop Show, episode number 35. I am Michael R. Gaines. And I am Casey Coughlin. International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Have you been doing that all day at all? No, I haven't. <laughs> Hence why I like needed to get my quota in before the day was over. <laughs> I didn't do it at all. Uh, it's yeah, okay. I, know. I told people, it's Talk Like a Pirate Day. Not talking like a pirate at all. <laughs> and, and nobody did that. No, they're like, oh, that's cute. I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> uh, all right, well, let's get to the news. Oh, big news. The big news this week. Since uh, last week, um, the I, iPhone 5 was announced. And yep. now we know how many damn uh, iPhone 5s are pre-sold. How many, Casey? Over 2 million pre-sales in the first 24 hours. Oh, my God. You don't have to say about that? I don't know. <laughs> Dominating. <laughs> yes. Um, just like a morning talk show. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, that was apparently more than twice uh, what the 4S did in the first 24 hours last year. Mm -hmm. um, completely, again, blowing apart Apple and everyone else's estimates. Everyone was totally caught unawares. Um, if you were like me on, you know, early Friday morning, Thursday night, cursing at and for their site just completely being unusable for the first four hours. Oh, yeah. People were saying that Apple um, sold out of pre-orders in the first three hours. Mm -hmm. um, and then I heard estimates in the first hour, which I think is, is kind of a little bit... Um, overshooting it, but three hours sounds about right. But in any case, you know, much quicker than the 4S, and then really any year they've sold more already. They've sold more iPhones, um, I think, before like in launch than mm -hmm. any iPhone previously. Yeah, and they're gonna sell more, obviously. You know, to people who didn't pre-order on Friday that just stand in line, those numbers are probably going to just be crazy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, another update like the 4S where people were like, oh, this is evolutionary and not revolutionary. Meh. But going to go out in droves and buy it anyways. <laughs> well, I agree. It, it's not like when we went from the iPhone 1 to like maybe the iPhone 3 or, or something yeah. like that. And I've said before, I'm hoping that they do innovate more for the iPhone 6 at some point in two years. And, and we'll see. So I have confidence that Apple will do something. I mean, I'm, I'm upgrading from a 4, not a 4S. So for me, it's, it's going to be huge. And I looked at some of the benchmark numbers. The benchmark numbers are far above the iPhone 4. So yeah. I'm not really concerned that I'm wasting my money or anything like that. So And um, now you have a link here. I saw this too. Uh, somebody was unboxing uh, the iPhone 5. Some iPhone 5s went out as uh, review units. Yeah, a lot of reporters. Um, Malt, Wa Malt Wasberg got his. <laughs> um, Walt Mossberg. Walt Mossberg. I, yeah, read his review in the paper this morning. Mm -hmm. um, he got it, and I think probably The Verge and uh, some others. This one, I think, was Cult of Mac, the actual mm -hmm. unboxing. I saw, like, so the black one, like, the whole box is black, and the white one the whole box is white. I don't know. Kind of interesting. And you see kind of the packaging of the new um, ear pods. And so they have like this nice little, it looks like wind up case mm -hmm. uh, for the ear pods. They're not just kind of wrapped and shoved in the box. They have like a hard <laughs> case that you can take out and, and actually, you know, use like nice headphones come with. Yeah. I, I actually have a set. Um, Oh, I went, you went out and caught him. Well, I, I was out watching football the other day with uh, some friends, and there's an Apple store in the mall. So what I did was I just ran over there and, and grabbed a pair because I wanted to see what they were like. And they're very nice. That's what um, I was watching Sarah Lane on iPad Today last Thursday because you could buy these as soon as 
uh, I think last Wednesday mm-hmm. or last Thursday. That was, the first, that was the only thing you could buy immediately because everything else you had to wait till Friday uh, to pre-order, which yeah. is weird because normally on announcements, they give you something you can get right then or at least pre-order. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, on the day when you're all excited, spend, you know, and <laughs> here you go, put in your credit card here. And they didn't give us that. There's like the only thing we could buy this time was ear pods. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, Sarah Lane said the same thing, like surprisingly, they were right. These are way better. It's a huge improvement. Like you wouldn't think so from such dinky little things, but but they're actually really nice. Yeah, the uh, the treble, the high end is nice. The bass is nice. I I haven't played around with them enough to make judgment on the mid range. I've been playing things like music and some movies and things just to hear what they're like. They're I'll put it to you this way: the biggest problem that I had with the other headphones, the previous headphones, is that they would slip out of my ear every once in a yeah. while. Yeah. These, they're rock solid. They just stay exactly where they're supposed to be. So that's good. I'm happy about that. I don't have to keep doing this all the time with, yeah. with the yeah. one. Um, but I am I really like them a lot. Big improvement. And I don't like spending money on headphones. People say, well, why don't you buy the blah, blah, blah. Because I'm like, well, because they're 80 bucks. And I'm not going to spend 80 bucks to test something and then say they suck. Yeah. So, sure. all right. Um, there is a, um, well, it's not a rumor. Apple announced that the new lightning dock connector, the one that everybody's been bitching and moaning about, uh, is actually going to have a VGA and HDMI output, which is, which is good. But not directly from the port itself, it looks like. So if you use, I think um, what they're saying, and uh, there are some forum posts on Apple's site to kind of back this up, that... It doesn't natively have uh, video out and the iPod controls. No. So, not- like, when you would plug your iPhone, say, into your car, um, and you had iPhone controls in the in the console, mm-hmm. you know, and it kind of switched like that, that's not going to be a thing. It's probably going to do, like, some stereos do this where it says, like, not supported, you know, mm-hmm. and you get, like, the X. Um, and then the video out, which is weird like that seems like that should be a given but i guess with airplay and now everything mirrors to apple tv maybe they feel like why would you plug it in and and do video out like that why wouldn't you just mirror it to the apple tv well you could um here's the thing the video out that they're getting rid of is the old component of the i'm sorry not component composite video out and s video out like the old 480i that's gone uh, the I, so that I'm okay with because so that would be analog, right? And because this right. new, so that that I get, but and I know the the new lightning connector is all digital, and people are like, well, what does that mean? It's digital versus analog signals. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, you know, VGA is analog, DVI and HDMI and higher are uh, digital, so it only supports digital um, throughputs, but this article made it seem like any video, analog or digital, oh, the tape. Okay. Uh, if, if unless the artic- you use an adapter, then you're cool. But like natively, just the cord, the USB cord that it comes with mm-hmm. won't, you know, support it. I want to make some things very clear because there's a, there's a lot of confusion on the internet about this dock connector. The yeah. big confusion that people have is that right off the bat. Your iPhone 5 comes with a dock connector with with the new lightning port that plugs into USB. So everybody assumes that there are too many pins on the connector and that the thing only does USB. That is not true. Mm-hmm. It it has now. Here's the thing: is like there's there's a little confusion about the number of pins. So I really don't know. It's eight on the top and eight on the bottom, and then people are saying that there's a seventeenth on the side. So let's let's just say sixteen or seventeen. We don't know. Um, there are more pins than people think that they need, because yeah. people see the USB and they go, "Oh, that's all I can do." Well, now we find out, as I knew was going to happen, is that the dock connector is going to support more than USB. It's going to support HDMI, and it's yeah. going to support VGA. Um, I, although I read VGA and I was like, "You," I was like, "Well, that's analog." But we'll 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 see what happens. And um, supposedly there's a DVI connector coming out. So with HDMI, you need all that throughput. And, and this was the biggest problem that people had with, with the, the new dock connector, the Lightning connectors, that people were saying, well, why don't they just go with, with a um, micro USB? 
Yeah. And you can't because you can't pump the amount of data that you need out of micro USB. That's why you have to have this lightning dot connector and everybody's crapping all over it and not understanding the engineering of what that, that port really does. And, yeah. and, and well, that's where the confusion comes from. You know, like fear of the unknown, I think at this point, Yeah. you know, we don't really know that much about it. And Apple is very shy on the tech specs, you know? Um, so until we actually get these adapters and actually try them out, like I remember when I think it was the first, yeah, the first iPad came out and there was the HDMI adapter mm -hmm. and everybody's like, great HDMI adapter. I can hook it up. Everything's going to be sweet. And everything I do on the iPad is going to show up on the screen. And it wasn't until you actually used it that people were like, oh, it depends on the app to write for the adapter to put an out and I can't see everything on the TV and, you know, it's an app by app basis. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, little things like that, we're probably not going to find out until we actually practice and right. test them out. And let's not forget that people like to crap on Apple. And there's also that. Yes. The crusades are raging. Oh, I don't even want to get started on the, on the whole Android <laughs> thing the the pe so, look i i have never seen a more vicious group of people it's almost like like windows and mac all over again it well yeah that comparison has been it's awful made for years now and i'm not saying that it everybody is. who likes android is like that i'm not saying that at no, all but there's a no. certain group of people especially on google plus who do nothing except sit there all day long and make fun of apple and it's very distasteful. So, so. Johnny Ive is uh, designing a limited edition camera. Uh, the now this is interesting. It's a one-off. Yeah, for who? <laughs> like, who's gonna get this one? Uh, I don't know. We <laughs> we don't know who's gonna buy it. Uh, it seems like a joke. Well, no, this the things like this have been have been done before, where a one off is sold, auctioned, or or something like that. Um, uh, well, if the proceeds go to charity, then I can see the point of that. Yeah, um, it's going to be for a good cause. Though we don't know uh, uh, the details just yet, um, but it's going to be auctioned off by Bono for uh, for charity. Why Why are you rolling your eyes and shaking your head? I don't know. Those guys in Bono, they're just like. You know, very tight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've seen, uh, there's a, a French musician, Jean-Michel Jarre. He did a, a one-off of a record album. He did a record album for a museum piece. And um, he, the inside jacket opened up. And, what, and, and, and the jacket had um, seven pictures, uh, seven Polaroids. And there was an, a spot for an eighth. And that was supposed to be the spot for the owner's self-portrait. And the thing sold for a ton of money. It was played on French radio once on AM. So nobody has a clean copy of this album. Wow. And nobody knows who owns it. And nobody has a copy of it. And, and right after the, um, the auction was over, the masters were shattered. Okay. Yeah, things like that happen. One-offs happen. Okay. Okay. What's with uh, Time Warner? What are they doing? So they have finally, it looks like, seated control of the user interface of uh, their DVR user interface for potential deals on a future Apple TV. Ooh. It sounds like that was quite the point of contention, and they didn't want to give up control of their user interface. Because really, you know, if you've seen a Time Warner DVR, I mean, <laughs> they've mastered the UI. You, there's no room for improvement. <laughs> on their DVI interface. When you um, think of UI, you think of Time Warner Cable. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Apple could learn a thing or two. Uh, but, you know, the Time Warner's being the bigger man, and they're going to step down and say, okay, you guys can do what you want with your silly Apple TV. So, But that also, in a bigger picture, also says, obviously, they're in deal for an Apple TV. That sure. Time Warner's service is going to be linked to the Apple TV. Yeah, we know that this so. is coming. It's got to be at some point. Yeah. Somebody's got to just wrangle all this together at some point. Because now the companies are seeing that this stuff makes money. Oh, you think? Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> that, was, that was one of the silly reasons why NBC Universal pulled themselves off of iTunes years ago. 
Yeah. You know, and, and then they went, okay, okay, we were wrong. And then they came back. I guess, yeah. <laughs> I guess Internet we were makes losing money. money. <laughs> uh, there is a new all time high for Apple stock. Oh my God, $701.91. I remember when Apple stock was something like 60 some odd dollars. And I told them. <laughs> I told some friends, like, you know, maybe now would be the time to I buy don't remember it. remember <laughs> when it's been that low. I mean, yeah. Just when you think it can't get any higher, guess what happens? It gets higher. Yeah. Hell, I was so, in Boston when the stock sh- uh, shot up like 10 points or something like that right after that, that big speech in 97. Oh, the iPhone speech? The iPhone, well, the, the um, iMac speech. I'm, I'm sorry, not the iMac speech, the, um, the Microsoft speech. Where oh, Bill Gates oh, was on... Uh, 97. I'm thinking yeah. 2007. <laughs> Way off. I know. I make the same mistake every now and then. I'm like, oh, we're in the teens now. <laughs> oh, yes. We are. Uh, th- there's talk of it splitting, and that would make it more affordable for there's people. Always, there's been talk of it splitting for years now. I think every time... any t- Ever since they've been over 300, mm-hmm. like, okay, now they're going to split. Okay, 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 now they're going to, okay, 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 now. Now they're going to split. Now they're going to split. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not going to speculate on any kind of anything relating to stock, but um, yeah, so Apple's richer now. Oh, good for them. Yeah. And you know, because they're rich, they can afford to fly their entire design team to London. What's up with yeah. this? Yeah. So uh, they went to London to accept a design award uh, for, I think it was Best Consumer Device Design, Mm -hmm. um, which was what is really kind of amazing about this is that for the longest time, Apple's design team and who's on the design team has been really kind of shrouded in secrecy. Mm -hmm. Like they don't publicize i mean johnny i've you know was even kind of in i mean not talked about for a long time until very recently sure he's worked for apple for years but you didn't really hear him or hear his name until i think probably the iphone uh came out around that time um but still like he okay that was that was it and it ended there they never talked about anybody else on the design team you know the whole i mean if you're on the Apple campus, even other Apple employees can't even go into their design, you know, workshop. The whole thing is just so shrouded in secrecy. So the fact that they flew the entire team out and they're just kind of publicly saying, okay, here they are. You know, here's everybody on our design team when they never, like, spoke their names before mm-hmm. is pretty awesome. Sure. So kudos to Apple for, for getting this award in the first place. Well-deserved. Oh, best brand and best design studio of the last 50 years. Oh, was it 50 years? That oh. was the award. Wow. Uh, by the Design and Art Direction Awards. That's pretty amazing. That's like a Lifetime Achievement Award. Well, they deserve it. They totally do. You want to start this next one? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of haters, um, Samsung released a new mocking ad uh poking fun at iphone owners um you have the line again you know of of iphone people waiting in line in front of the apple store they're talking about the recent updates and uh and then you have sprinkled in uh galaxy s3 users and uh and then the apple people in line going oh what's that oh we yeah can't the, do these that. These, oh. these these two galaxy <laughs> three owners they they bump phones Oh, yeah. how how gentle they bump their phones. And then this girl online goes, what was that? What did you just do? Like, I like completely. Like, and, and the thing is, is that they made the girl blonde. Now, I don't know if that was intentional or not. Probably not. Probably not. I don't know. But it, I don't think they're that nefarious. <laughs> uh, look at what they're doing. The, the, the problem with, that I have with the commercials, like, it's one thing to poke fun of, of, of the the um, the jailbreaking and uh, well not the jailbreaking but being in jail like they did a couple of years ago yeah that's one thing what they made Apple fans look like are complete and utter morons they like, yeah they made Apple people look more more idiotic than even the 
I mean, I said before that those recent Apple commercials with the genius yeah. made Apple users look stupid. But thankfully, yes. Samsung came along and made this commercial. <laughs> well, th- that same blonde actress, she she has this line in the commercial. She goes, the new dot connector does digital only. I don't even know what that means. Yeah, what does that even mean? I, Which, you know, okay, granted, a lot of people probably don't know what that means. But it doesn't... Maybe I'm looking at this whole thing differently because I look at stuff from the engineering side. And so when people say, oh, you're an ice sheep, oh, you buy Apple for a status symbol, oh, you're a hipster. Uh, no, it's because I've done my homework and Apple products work with the stuff that I have in the house and uh, I don't need to have animated wallpapers. See, but that, okay, and then that argument is kind of, well, that's a big reason why I've always loved Apple and, and not just the iPhone, but all their products because they really span kind of the spectrum of users. Mm-hmm. Apple products are really great for the the low end, I don't know a thing about computers, just make it dead simple for me. And then they're also great for the high end, I know everything and I code a lot and oh. I know the inner workings and how you know everything is laid out in the um, operating system. That's why you know I want Apple to I mean, the whole spectrum is kind of covered. Mm-hmm. Um, same with, the, I feel like, the iPhone. And if you really, you know, like I said before, really want a lot of those kind of features that you feel like Apple's keeping away from you, hell, you can always hack your iPhone. Sure. Um, but, yeah, uh, they make Apple user And the part where the guy is uh, sitting in line saving it for somebody else and it's his parents... Like, just kind of saying, see, the only people who would want iPhones are old people who don't know anything. I, I, it, it's insulting. In my opinion, it's insulting because it makes us look stupid. And you don't see Apple doing that in the other direction. Mm. Because if you look at the old, That's I'm a Mac, arguable. I'm a PC, what? Yeah, see, the, the Mac PC commercials with John Hodgman, that yeah. totally is doing that. I mean, it's not calling out windows well no they did actually they call that more it's more to call if you're going to call out the company and the operating system that's one thing but when you start calling out the users that's where you draw the line in my opinion and i I never really saw the i'm a mac i'm a pc commercials really really calling out pc users just the operating system itself yeah yeah that's true so like you could demonize an object but now in the Samsung commercials case, you're demonizing the people. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Right. I mean, I think they have every right to make fun of, I mean, you know, make fun of whatever. It's, it's you know, free, it's a free country. Sure. I mean, uh, poke fun at the, at the line, you know, and, and people who camp out and the culture and everything. But yeah, like you're saying, um, you're going to poke fun at individual users and just kind of say, if you're, if you're, I mean, the overall message, I think at the end of the commercial was if you're using an iPhone, you don't get it. You don't know technology and you're out of touch. Yeah. And and that's the, uh, that's the, uh, that's the big argument that a lot of people on Google plus have been using lately is that people that buy. It's really the only argument I think that Android users have, like they, they say, you know, well, iPhones, they, they are restrictive and that they don't get the latest and greatest features. And what does that mean? Look, like the one thing that people are complaining about, uh, the Android people are making fun of the fact that the iPhone 5 doesn't have NFC. And I've said on this show before, I want NFC. But I was talking to uh, Eric Rice. He and I were talking about it. And I said, you know what? Nobody around here even has NFC. I live yeah. in one of the biggest metropolitan areas in the world. And there isn't a single store in my area that has NFC. So maybe Apple looked at that and said, you know what? If New York doesn't have it, why should we bother? And Well, I'm sure they're probably working on it, but really Apple very seldomly, and I would even say most of the time, Apple hasn't been an innovator in any, any sphere, any genre, anywhere in any of their products. They're almost always, you know late or second to the game on features Mm -hmm. but when they do bring a feature to market 
it is done right mm-hmm. the first time. It is not, totally agree. you know, they don't push it out and say, oh, bu- uh, uh, update, you know, download this update because, <laughs> you know, the thing and we were just, you know, whatever, we stayed up too late. No, I'm sorry, but, you know, download the update and it'll be totally mm-hmm. cool. Um, Sure. As a matter of fact, I, I saw um, there was a conversation between two people on Google Plus today about how uh, NFC isn't working for them. And it was just hilarious. I'm like, well, this is the reason why Apple probably didn't put it in. It's because your phone is not working with the store that you're trying to work it with. And and there are things that have to get shaken out. Does it sound like I'm apologizing for Apple? Well, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, because if you... <laughs> well, no, think about it. You're, well, you're a programmer, kind of too. But when you make yeah. it... But... Nothing. No, I didn't want to cut you off. Oh, I mean, yeah, okay. We're both, we're both apologizing for Apple, pretty much. Um, but I, I, and really, I think anybody should. I trust Apple to kind of do the right thing. I trust that they have reasons for everything that you know is coming or didn't come, or you know the choices they've made, the 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 things that they put in the iPhone or didn't put in the iPhone. I'm sure there's very good reasons for, and mm-hmm. I don't think it was like some sort of nefarious plan to like only trickle out a couple of things, you know. And so we're like, oh, we can only have five, you know, updates in this iteration because then what would we have for the next iteration? You sure. know, we have to keep you wanting, or you know, we only made so many so that we would run out and create demand. And <laughs> you know, they're not they're not nefarious like that. And any company who you know, is as popular, especially Apple, like they could sell every one they make. So why wouldn't they make more? Why wouldn't they, you know, put as much as they could in a phone? You know, I mean, it's a very good point. People are going to buy it no matter what. Right. If you could put NFC in it, why would you just not do it? Why would you wait? Unless there was a very good reason, a mechanical functional reason that they couldn't or, you know, there's, there's a method to their madness. Exactly. I mean, I'm these confident. aren't stupid people. These aren't stupid engineers. They're not stupid designers, and, and they're not stupid managers. If they didn't want to do something, there's a reason for it. Yeah. And um, here, I'll give you another good example. Um, people bitched that uh, the last iPhone didn't have LTE in it. In my area, again, New York, AT&T just announced two weeks ago that they're finally expanding LTE. Two yeah. weeks ago. So. Yeah. Apple probably looked at all the markets and said, "Derp." Well, AT and T is our biggest, uh, one of our yeah, our, exactly. our biggest uh, um, uh, carriers. So why would we support LTE if nobody's going to freaking use it? And yeah, okay. So the Android people had it, it and uh, I, it, it, the problem that I have with this, and I, I've, I've written this down before, is that I really don't understand how people could be so hateful over somebody else's choices over what kind of phone they use and this goes it happens all the-, all the time look at religion look at politics people <laughs> clearly like need a reason to hate it seems i i suppose so I, I i actually believe that there are people out there that get joy out of crapping on others well yeah that your life is so bad that either you have to bring everybody down to your level or you just have to i don't know expel yeah or like the only way that you can rally the troops is to crap on a group of people. Yeah, because you have nothing good to hold up, so you have to bring everybody else down. Yeah. So that's what... Anyways. Anyways. Um, that's enough bitching, I think. Apple released 10.8.2 uh, Mountain Lion. Uh, was it today or yesterday? Today. Today. This morning with the uh, iOS 6 update, um, which if you've been living in a cave, um, you can download iOS 6 today. Yes. <laughs> We've talked about iOS 6 before. There's really nothing that we're going to talk about that's new. Um, we did an episode, or what, about two or three months back? Yeah, yeah. When the, when the beta first came out and I put it on my phone, um, we had a pretty extensive episode. And really, um, you know, I think uh, most blogs and everything have covered it pretty extensively. If you didn't watch the keynote by Apple last week, you know, they highlighted some some of the stuff in iOS 6. Mm-hmm. Um, not a lot of brand new stuff, but more improvements on existing stuff. Right. And what surprised me is that I have Siri on my iPad 3 now. Yes, as do I. It's very nice. Oh, I, I do want to say this. Um, I tried um, the new Maps on mm-hmm. my iPad 3, 
in my area, I don't get the uh, the flyover, and I didn't really expect to. Yeah. But when I move the map a little bit to the right to New York City, you get this amazing 3D flyover view. It's great. Really? I, I, I don't. I, I moved it to L.A. Nothing. Nothing really. Yeah, on L.A. I know. Well, I I posted this picture uh, when I go to the Empire State Building. If if you look south. You could see the World Trade Center. So what I tried to do is simulate that, but but from behind the world, uh, the Empire State Building a little bit, and I was able to do it. I posted it on Twitter earlier. Is that there's a picture of the of the Empire see. State Building in the foreground and the World Trade Center. And the weird thing, it uh, not the weird thing, but the cool thing is that the World Trade Center is still under construction, and they have this 3D model of WTC one under construction. Crazy. I don't know how up to date it is. Uh, but yeah, you, you could see like the windows only go up to a certain level and then, you know, the construction goes up and then the ladder is on the side. It's amazing. Huh. It's nice. Amazing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, 1082 has Facebook integration and finally, yeah. Cause you know, we're all begging for that. <laughs> um, and then there is an update to lion. They're still updating lion. Yes. Uh, gatekeeper. <laughs> so you guys can be locked out too. <laughs> But yeah, I haven't updated to 10.8.2 yet. Um, I usually don't update unless I absolutely have to. Yeah, I haven't updated mine either. I was just about to do it before the show, and I'm like, hmm, when is the worst time to do an update? <laughs> just before you're recording a show. Yeah, hmm. So I'll probably do it after the show. <laughs> All right, let's move on to rapid fire. I think we got music now. We only have a couple of items here, and uh, Casey put both of them in, so why don't you tell us what we got? <laughs> um, I thought this was fantastic. Uh, Apple is set, or I guess in talks, to build a massive data center in Hong Kong with construction reportedly beginning in Q1 of next year nice. and slated for completion uh, in a year after that. All these data centers that Apple are putting up, uh, they're dead serious about making sure that everything gets to all their users fast. Well, hell yes. I'm totally build more, you know? Yeah. Build one in every country if you need to. They have the money and, um, you know, if they're willing to back their infrastructure, I mean, obviously that's only going to do well for them in the future. Sure. And it creates jobs. Which is what there we need go. now. So how many data centers we've got now? We've got Virginia, Austin, Portland. Is that the one? Is it in Portland? Yeah, there's one. I don't know if it's Portland, but Oregon. Oregon. Now we have one that's going to be in uh, Hong Kong. Hong Kong. So that's four. There was one. Did you say Carolina already? Uh, Virginia. That was the first one. Oh, it? I'm sorry, North Carolina. North Carolina My, was like the first yeah. one. Uh, so that's four. We're gonna. I'll, I'll expect to see one in Europe within six months. Yeah. Announced in six months. Yeah, because so, they opened, uh, what, two more Apple stores are opening, um, I think, this Friday. Mm -hmm. and, uh, one in, like, Sweden and one in Germany. Um, oh, and then I heard another one in Bakersfield, California. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, in the middle of nowhere. Bakersfield. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, I mean, constant, you know, store openings <laughs> and lately constant data centers opening up. Hey. So, awesome creates jobs it's that's what i'm happy about yeah take that romney uh, <laughs> oh. so iphone 5 ship dates if you haven't done your pre-orders or you plan not to then you know great but if you're still planning on ordering an iphone uh the ship dates have slipped again from two to three weeks to three to four weeks yeah so don't expect it anytime soon no but it was tough getting in that uh, those first few hours there are some people that said that they ordered immediately through the Apple the Apple Store app. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't read that until afterwards. I was I was refreshing the the store page over and over again, but I I finally got it and um, I got my tracking number. So yeah, it'll be here on Friday. Yeah, um, all the ones I ordered for work through the AT and T store, even though their website didn't work until like four in the morning and I couldn't even put any orders in until four in the morning and I was kind of sweating. Oh my God, are they going to come in on Friday or not? Mm -hmm. You know, because of all these reports. Uh, last night, you know, my phone was blowing up with all the confirmation <laughs> emails. So, um, 
All the one, 22 phones that I ordered last Friday are coming in this Friday. Nice. All right, let's move on to culture. There's an iOS upgrade. <laughs> That's it. Moving on. <laughs> no, it's, it's funny that we talked about it. It's like the big news. We didn't talk about it because we had talked about uh, we had talked about iOS 6 before. And Casey, uh, did you throw that in or did I? I forgot who threw that in there. It's, it just says iOS upgrade. It's like iOS 6 is out. Yay. Yeah, right. So like even though I'm <clears> getting a new phone in two days, I was still like at 10 a.m., you know, like backing up, downloading the new OS. <laughs> so um, I did that to my phone and my iPad this morning. A um, bunch of people were saying like, ah, it's taking three hours, four hours, you know, and the time kind of varied. I yeah. did my iPhone first and it took, even though it said it was going to take four hours, it only took like 30 minutes. And then I did my iPad and like literally half an hour later, it took twice as long. So. And you have listed here, iPhone 5 confirmations were sent out that you mentioned already. Oh, I already said that. Yes. Okay. Um, so if you, like I said, if you had ordered on Friday and expect it to come in Friday, you should have already received it or be receiving it sometime today. If you didn't, then... Maybe you're not going to get it on Friday. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a way. I want to say this. Um, a friend of mine told me about this today. Uh, if you go to the UPS website and you search by reference number, you can put in your phone number, and that's how you can get your tracking number if you haven't gotten it yet. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I bought an Apple TV today. I know this well, is like well, well, <laughs> Casey says to me. <laughs> Casey said to me, did you have one already? The reason I never had one before is because I never really needed it. Because everything that I had... That's a total lie. You needed it like three years ago. No, I didn't need it three years ago. Because I streamed everything from my TiVo. Dude, I don't have enough Apple TVs. I'm like, I need more <laughs> Apple TVs. You need another one? Yes. <laughs> I need an Apple TV in every room. I'm not going to get you one. <laughs> it's just like, here's one. Here's another one. I have another hey, one. If any viewers would like to send Casey an Apple TV... <laughs> Casey needs more Apple TVs. Um, there, here's the problem, and, and I'm a little ticked at Apple about this, is that uh, iTunes won't stream 5.1 audio from stuff that you bought out of your PC. Even though your PC, you're shaking your Keep head, no. being PC. No, but it's supposed to. Here's the thing. The, no, wait. <laughs> no, hold on. If you go to the QuickTime Preferences panel, it asks you how... Well, what? Uh, how many channels do you have coming out of your PC? So I selected 5.1. Oh, sounds like a personal question. <laughs> I selected 5.1, 16-bit, 48 kilohertz, just like my sound card is set up. Yeah, and yeah. every time I would switch from stereo to uh, 5.1, uh, nothing would happen. And the thing Maybe is... You're it wrong no i'm not doing it wrong but i did a search on the internet and let me tell you something doing a search on the internet for something that says 5.1 itunes all you get are a whole bunch of reports of people like how come itunes 5.1 doesn't work from like 2007 or something <laughs> like that so i had to weed out a whole bunch of stuff i finally found a um something on the apple community forums where somebody says itunes does not send out 5.1 audio and I don't understand why it doesn't. So this is only from the Windows version, not the Mac version. The Mac version does work. The, right. The so I Mac just want version, to clarify, yeah. like, it's, it's based on the version. It's not that iTunes holistically doesn't do this. Right. You, it's a little tricky doing it on the Mac. You have to go to the app, uh, the uh, audio MIDI setup and, and do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But if you have a digital port on the back of your Mac, you can send out uh, 5.1 audio at an optical port. Oh, but on okay. windows so it has to be like a toss link right but on windows if you like i have uh, a sound card power dvd works world of warcraft works all my games work all the other apps very work. important Blue things <laughs> well, no, well these are things that output 5.1 yes. they all work but itunes does not only to find out that it, itunes is just not built to output 5.1 and i don't understand i think that's one of the things that i really don't like about why apple didn't support this so i wound up getting an, uh, an, uh, an Apple TV because I got um, like a $10 coupon from Best Buy, something. So I got it for 90 bucks. I'm like, well, let's give this a shot. And sure enough, not only does it play flawlessly in 1080p, but it plays Duh. in 5.1. Duh. 
God. flawlessly. But I just don't like the fact that iTunes doesn't output 5.1 like every other app in the world does. Who cares? Just put it to Apple TV. It, the reason why it is because I didn't want to have to spend an extra hundred bucks for something that I shouldn't have to buy. So you waited until you had a coupon because you're such a cheapo with your Apple product. It's no, it's not, it's not, it's not the money. Product. It's not the money. It's the principle of the fact that I have iTunes on my PC. My PC has a 5.1 card. Why do I have to spend a hundred bucks on an Apple product to do what my PC should be doing? I don't know. Why are you doing it on PC? Uh, because it's the only system <laughs> in this room that has a 5.1 system in it. Um, I don't know. Like I said before, I'm sure Apple has a very good reason. <laughs> no, I don't know this time. Or the iTunes Windows team is just a sack of potatoes. <laughs> or possibly the same freaking team at Microsoft that works on Office for Mac. Because much, <laughs> much like iTunes for Windows, Office for Mac is a, is a pile of crap. Oh, uh, well, that too. I, th I think they they might be in cahoots to make you know horrible products for each other. Yeah, uh, setting it up was was fast, easy. It pulled everything over from my uh, from my Mac, and um, it's in the same room, so it just streamed everything over the network, and it was it was great. It did what, exactly what it was supposed to do. Awesome. But Breaking news. You heard it here first. <laughs> Apple products just work. That's amazing. All right. What stuff do you want? Ah. I saw this today. It's fantastic. Uh, if you guys, if anybody like was on, you know, the edge of their seat when that Kickstarter for the Pebble Watch came out, yeah. or have been watching any of these these new smart watches uh, come out, there's a new one called I'm Watch or I Am Watch. Um, okay. If you go to IamWatch.com, um, it is amazing. It looks exactly like the old uh, iPod Nano with the screen and it it's uh, just like any other smart watch you can get your phone calls your messages your emails um, photos anything you know social media everything through your watch and it tells time oh um, how, there you go for, you Who'd know have for thought? between 350 and 450 they're a little pricey for a watch but if it does everything it's supposed to as advertised and it looks good. Like, that's amazing. Cool. All right, moving on to apps. What apps do you got that we all want to hear about? All right, so my app, it's been around for a while, but I just now got around to buying it and using it. Um, it's called Air Display. Mm -hmm. uh, it's available for Mac, iPad, and iPhone, but it's, it's mainly for iPad and iPhone. Um, what it is is it makes your iPad or iPhone like a second screen so you can extend your desktop of your Mac to that device. Nice. Um, you download a little client uh, that kind of sits up on your menu bar and so then when you on your device you open the app you have to be on the same Wi-Fi network you open the app you turn on you know connect on your Mac it finds it it adjusts the screen and spreads it across and then you've got you know so like, I work on a laptop. If I was out and about and needed just a little bit more space, I could bust out my iPad and have dual monitors on the go. Mm. It works awesome. The only thing is it kind of messes up the um, the screen resolution, which messes up your mouse. Oh. So with an actual second monitor, it you know actually extends the number of pixels. So instead of, like, say you know, 1450 stretched across two monitors, you have, uh, I don't know, I can't do math, uh, 2900 um, pixels. Mm. And so your, your mouse, when you scroll across, feels normal, you know. But with this, it, ex it kind of stretches the same amount of pixels across your screen and the iPad. Oh, cool. So then your cursor, when you cursor over, it's a little, um, it's a little weird. That's the only drawback. Everything else, fantastic. Cool. Um, I think it's like three or four bucks in the App Store. And, uh, yeah. Hmm. All right. Mine this week, um, I talked about it recently, the new YouTube app for oh. iOS, the native YouTube app. I like this a lot. I like it a lot better than the original one we've had, which was a little stale, admittedly. They, I don't think they updated it since the first iteration. No, they didn't. Uh -huh. 
then. <laughs> but uh, they have a lot of cool stuff in here, things that you couldn't do before. And the old iOS app is now available here. And they do a great job with the UI. And I think that everybody should grab it. The only problem is that there's no native iPad version. Oh, oh, it's still just an iPhone app that you have yeah. to tool up on the iPad. Well, that's lame. It is lame. Right. Um, I don't understand that. Hopefully, they'll come out with an iPad version soon. And as a developer, I don't understand why they couldn't just do it because it wasn't that hard for me to do it. Right. Yeah, it's in the SDK. If you're doing it for one. Yeah, do it for one, just do it the other. It's uh, Apple makes it very easy to extend an, an iPhone app to an iPad app. Um, <laughs> I think we have a show title. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we do. No, I, let me let me go off on a tangent for a second. I've been working on bringing my apps up to iOS six for the iPhone five. Bringing them up to iPhone um, iOS six was easy. Mm -hmm. um, I had to make a couple tweaks, but but nothing serious. The problem with um, with the iPhone five is that the way that um, that Xcode works is that it says, "Here is your your window for for iOS for the iPhone." And originally it was 480 pixels tall, all right. And here's your here are your settings for the iPad, and it would it would ask you which is your window for your iPhone app and which is the window for your iPad app, and then you would say this one and this one, and that would be it. What they don't have, at least not in Xcode 4.5, is that they don't have a way of saying which is your iPhone 5 window, mm -hmm. and and it doesn't automatically switch. There's um. Uh, there's some uh, some people that are trying to figure out exactly how to extend your native app for an iPhone 5, and nobody can figure wow. out how to do it except for using a splash screen, but not everybody uses a splash screen. So we're yeah. all still trying to figure it out. So they haven't really start updated the SDK for that yet? Uh, the SDK is there. It's just that th there's a section in Xcode that says, Tell me what your settings are for your phone. Oh, Tell so me they what need your to settings update for your... Xcode then. Somebody, th there needs to be a better way so that you can say, here are my settings for the iPhone 5 and yeah. then work off of that because now everything has to be done programmatically. Not a big deal. I don't want to sound like I'm lazy or anything, but the whole point of Xcode is that you know, everything like is lazy. graphical and you just want it because now you have to say, okay, if size equals the... You know, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Just do some more if or loops and you'll be fine <laughs> um speaking of the youtube app uh, another uh, youtube or google service that was excommunicated out of the iphone and ios 6 oh what maps yes. um google has their own standalone maps app that came out today in the app store so you can download that too as well and um i don't know have them fight <laughs> like tekken Yes, so that's out, um, and uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Until I think... we actually have the new iPhone next week, and we can show it off, and um, yeah. Um, until next week, kids, uh, you know where to find us. We are infinite, the infinite loop show com, the infinite loop at Facebook, G Plus, uh, YouTube. Oh no, we're at Nexicon Studios on YouTube. That's uh, right, we are. The Infinite Loop Show at gmail.com. Email us. Um, tell us your woes, your concerns. I don't know how you're feeling today, <laughs> what you ate for breakfast, um, you know, if my skin looks okay. Um, whatever. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. All right. Casey is Casey Queso, K A C E Y K E S O, K A S O. I am at Starmike on Twitter. We will talk to you next week. Bye.